Hi, Kalyan. Great to see you again. And uh, it's only three weeks since we spoke and um, there was realization. And um, the, the conversation that we had on the 24th of February uh, is online and it's available. So we'll we'll post this conversation next to it but so people can refer to both of them. So yeah, it would be great if you can let us know how things have developed for you really over the past little while and a bit of your backstory as well. Um, yay, I'm super excited to talk to you and there's just so much to talk about. I've actually never had so many words for something because <laughs> Part of my experiencing, um, you know, having kind of a uh, enlightenments or aha moments or awakenings, I usually come to like no words. <laughs> yeah. And then when you emailed me to talk again, I was to have another conversation. I was thinking, I was like, oh my God, I have so much to talk about. Yeah. Oh, it's just like... Um, you mentioned in the email about, you know, this is an integration process. And um, uh, the day of our conversation, it was just um, the feeling of complete and utter freedom is all I can, no worry, no fear, and just free. I mean, that is like what everybody is searching for it's like this feeling of everything's okay and there's actually nothing to worry about and there's actually nothing to do you know except to just be yes and absolute other utter kind of clarity as well as to the purpose of life almost you know but that's hard to explain into words but it was just like this is the purpose and this is the reason. And this is amazing. You know, it's, it's, um, having consciousness, you know, have this perceived, um, separation in order to fully understand who you are, you know? Yes. Yeah. Is the conclusion. Cause I kept thinking like, why would you have this perceived separation? And it's because of the feeling of, of realizing again, who you are is truly freeing and truly empowering. And yeah. And like just love, joy, peace, all that stuff. But <laughs> um, so that was my first, the first day after our conversation. And then after that, I, so I was thinking like, this is what happened when I learned happened to me I be started to become really aware of Kylie Ann and the invitations that were coming in to you know Kylie Ann's you know yes. inviting me to um you know be this you know body mind yes and it's the personal realm mm -hmm, I started to become really way way more aware of these constant invitations. Cause I, um, before our conversation, it was kind of, I always like to say, I just kind of, I could, I thought I had those invitations kind of that they weren't affecting me, but I realized I was positive, kind of positive mind, mind setting myself, you know, thinking and kind of denying that I was getting these invitations, you know, yes. and so I suddenly became like way more aware of some pretty strong invitations to be the body mind of Kylie Ann and live in the drama life experience of her and think that I am just that. And it was like, this is the same thing that happened to me when I learned um, transcendental meditation. But first week, I my kind of anxiety and got way worse because I suddenly was aware of the things that were going on in my mind. And I think, and it was, and then, and then everything really settled down. And so the next couple of days after our conversation, I was started to become really aware of these um, invitations and aware of the invitations that um, my mind like goes on autopilot and says yes to. You know, if I'm not really 
alert to it alert yeah alert to it because it's been saying yes to these invitations you know kind of for yes, a very it's long time automatic, isn't it yeah and, and in fact it it ha- it seems to happen so quickly before we become aware that that you know this is the process that we're not even conscious that we're adopting them that you know they just come in and there's identification we haven't even noticed really yeah yes yeah it does it's very it was it's very quick um so i kind of started to like but you know allowing these invitations and you know of your you know kind of a failure you aren't worthy you've really messed things up you're irresponsible you know like all this and um I was laying awake it was a couple nights after our conversation I was laying awake and I just was overwhelmed with these feelings of you know being I was accepting all the invitations into that and also being aware that they're coming in and I I was just I couldn't sleep I was just feeling lower than I had in quite that I can remember and um when I was laying there I suddenly it just got really bad and I suddenly heard a voice and the voice shouted at me in my ear and it wasn't it felt very much outside of me but also at the same time inside of me saying um who's thinking these thoughts <laughs> and I and I answered well my mind and who is the mind and I was like or no it was the is the mind are you the mind and I said no well, then what are you and I was like I'm the one aware of the mind <laughs> Fantastic. and it was like over and over asking me these questions shouting at me asking and then finally I I was like, yeah, I am the awareness of that. And I just let go. And then this stream of kind of creativity flew in and this burst of energy came over me and I just felt amazing. And then since that, then it's been just kind of like dipping in and out, integrating, you know? Yes, yeah. No, you know, being aware of... Mm -hmm that I'm awareness yes. and then pulled back into, you know, it's the way, body it's the mind. way you describe it, Kylie, because following realization, there can be a bit of an onslaught of invitations and um, it, it's great the way you dealt with them because even though they were coming in thick and fast, then, you know, you were able to just stand firm and say, well, I, I'm the awareness that's aware of these invitations. And that's, um, you know, you, you've you you've won then, really. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I really, when I, um, I have noticed, so um, our first conversation, you're talking about kind of the visual. What I've noticed with the visual, with the ocean, that you're kind of the deep ocean, the thoughts are on top. Yes. Um, I I, can't, I feel that when I really get into the visual that I've come into, that's actually been awesome, is that I um, I just kind of picture like, it's weird. My aura, you know, kind of like I have a light shining around me and that is the awareness and it's watching me. Mm-hmm. So I feel almost like a pressure from outside, but it's like a good pressure. Mm-hmm. And I picture, and then I'm like, well, now we're just watching. And when I, I can get into that and it's all I want to do is just, I'm just, I literally feel like I'm watching a movie and it's really awesome (laughs) and I've done it at work quite a few times with and it's just like not being very productive because I'm I'm realizing there's not actually like nothing to do right now you know like when I'm in a room with a patient I'm just like we're just being right here you know um and that's all that is needed really Mm -hmm is me to like stand as the awareness being aware of their awareness and you know because it brings a certain like calm and energy different 
um yeah it can be very healing can't it because you're, yeah you're holding extremely that healing person, yeah yeah, yeah but that see. is yeah um that's kind of the visual that i've or that i have visualized in my mind when i'm um maybe an in, invitations are coming in and i'm trying to decline them <laughs> you know but i'm like no i'm the awareness and then i can feel I just like feel the light out, kind of outside, inside, but pr- kind of pressure coming in, like just observing and watching and like, yeah. So. Yeah, that, <laughs> it, it's great the way you describe it, that, because it does have that. Sometimes there's that feeling. It's the sort of intensity of the beingness and it does almost feel like a pressure. It's almost tangible, isn't it? Yeah. 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 The other thing that I noticed is that the day that we talked, um, I went and I decided, cause you were, you said, you know, just take it easy. Like there's nothing to go. And I let go of a, a ton of stuff that I thought I needed to do. And I just laid in bed and I was listening to Lester Levinson. And I was like, there's this really long, like six hour vid- video of a uh, talk on YouTube that I haven't got a chance to listen to. And I was like, thinking things and um, awarenesses were coming to me as I was laying there kind of half in and out of sleep. And I would think them and literally within like 30, 10, 20, 30 seconds, he would start talking about it on the video. Yeah. It happened like 20 yeah. times. I mean, it was like over and over. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so right. that was cool because I've been really kind of playing around with not um needing to get my hands into controlling things you know and just allowing things to work out Hmm. um so like with scheduling you know having family and kids and stuff and feeling that I really need to get into like the details of the schedule and just allowing it to work out and it's worked out beautifully (laughs) I'm like worried about you know, oh, how is this going to work? And then all of a sudden, my husband will come up and be like, oh, I can do that because I don't have to, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I didn't even have to think about it or like, it just works out. Yes. I, um, I planned um, a vacation that I'm going on Mm -hmm. and I did it kind of spontaneously without necessarily checking with my work (laughs) because... (laughs) I felt like, I think it's just going to work out. It felt really good. And I was like, I think it's just going to work out and I'm just gonna, and it did because I didn't worry about it. I didn't think about it. I just planned it. I didn't say anything. I knew that I would know the time and appropriate to bring it up where it would just flow and it would be easy. Well, it happened to be that I got called, um, I was, I had been looking to transfer to a different apartment for a a, a different schedule. Mm -hmm. And, um, they, um, that different department was like, called me and they're like, yeah, we, we would love to have you come over and work over here and you can do the days and not so many late nights. And, um, I talked to my boss at my other department and just said, Hey, can I transfer over there? And she was, even though I, it was, outside of like the time frame that she should have let me transfer anyway but she was totally fine with it and it was all good and then it just happened to be where my transfer is right in between my vacation is right in between the when I'm gonna start <laughs> where I'm oh, done with, with one department yeah. and then I'm gonna start with the other so I didn't even have to talk to anybody or do anything about it I just have that free time in between Fantastic. the transfer <laughs> to go on the vacation yeah. and I'm really? like that's well, That's you notice kind of... that, yeah, sometimes you see that worry, you know, about things not working out is actually the spanner in the works, because when we withdraw any sense of worry, then everything works really well. But it, it's it's a practice in a way just to become familiar with that, because, you know, lots of conditioning we've had is to be concerned and take responsibility with the mind. But once you once you relinquish that responsibility, then the intelligence just comes forward to take care of it and it's yeah it's just really playful then so yeah that's a great demonstration of that 
Yeah, it's, um, it is, it is, def it's definitely, um, comes into just tr trust, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which I think, you know, when you are feeling, when I'm, you know, being invited to be Kylie Ann, mind body, it's hard for me to trust and my mind thinks it has to control everything, you know, but again, when I have, when I know the feeling of what it's like to be, um, awareness and mm -hmm. the true nature, you know, it's just, you don't actually have to worry about anything. Everything kind of will come together and mold around what it is that you want yes. yeah. <laughs> or what you need, you know? Yeah. 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 It was cool. Yeah. So I, I've been having, um, just a ton of fun with just like letting just not doing much of anything, which is funny because, um, I have this passion for horses and I, you know, I love animals in general. And, um, I have this dream of having this human horse sanctuary and it's literally where people come and to just be with the horses to learn how to do nothing and just be. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that idea was just kind of crazy, you know, and I try to explain it to people. I'm like, there's nothing because when you hang out with horses, they're and animals in general, but horses, especially because they're just like these massive creatures that are just so present mm -hmm. and they really only they only are present and they only are intuition. That's mm -hmm. all, you know, yes. and the energy of that just is amazing mm -hmm. um but i was the kylie Ann side was like well maybe i need to have like programs and stuff and i'm like no i just you just need to come and hang out with horses and like just come mm -hmm. to the sanctuary to learn how to literally do nothing and just mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. you know and i had um this time where I, um, cause I volunteer at a horse rescue just so I could to like take care of them and hang out with horses. But I was going to get into learning, um, training and groundwork for riding and stuff. And I spent the summer where I had time arena time with one of the re rescue horses to work on my skills with, um, you know, horse training. And instead of every time I never went, I went into the arena with the horse, like two times, the other, <laughs> all the other times, all I did was go out into the field. Cause there was like eight of them. And I just hung out with the herd because they taught me so much to just, of just like not doing anything and just being aware, being aware of the wind, being aware of a noise and then just being still and then aware of the sun or aware of you know a gate closing or you know it was just and I would literally just kind of mimic them mm -hmm. and, and pay attention and then and then they would get all still and then I would just be still and then we would be aware of it was just it just was like the best experience um and I just I just feel like yeah, it would be cool too. Yeah, well, they they're just effortlessly aware of forms arising in yeah. time, and um, that, I think that's true of so so many animals. You know, we can learn so much from them. It's just that they've been treated as commodities, so people don't really get to connect with them and to understand them. But um, yeah, that's changing. I feel, but it, it, yeah, I I really like the way you do that. But it's. Yeah, it's it's funny how you're just going and aligning your consciousness with them. And that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it is, because they're just totally present in any little change. You see their ear move or their head move. And as yeah, it, it can just be a simple thing, can't it? But they're just fully aware of it and alert to it. Yeah, and that's it. There's no judgment or of any sort of thing. Mm. It's just awareness and mm. and then presence, you know, <laughs> and then aware. <laughs> Yeah. Would you like to um to um say something about your earlier life, you know, when you were growing up and the, the sort of experiences you had? Oh yeah, I'm that was the same thing that happened to me with um 
So yeah, as a child, I, I enjoyed, I just enjoyed being by myself. (laughs) You know, I had a very active, like just by myself kind of mode. And actually my mom used to babysit for, she was a stay at home mom and all the other, we are from a small town. So all of the other families, my mom would watch their kids during the day when they went to, um, where they went to work. And it was like, always such a drag I'm like oh my gosh am I gonna have to play with this again I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. anyway so I did so I did end up I um spent a lot of time by myself and what I did so when the things that I the animals I communicated with with um when I was a child were, were squirrels <laughs> and so yeah. I would I knew that I always wanted to get them close enough to where I could like pet them or have more interaction and so I I knew as a so as a child I would just sit by a tree and I um and I knew that I had to be present Mm -hmm. just everything we're talking about with the horses that I just had to be present um in order for them to come close to me that's it I didn't as soon as I would think about can I touch them can I reach out and touch then they would go away and I also what I did was I knew they liked or maybe it was me getting present, but I would just like hum like one tone. Mm -hmm. Um, and that I would start doing that and they just, I mean, they would come, they'd be, I'd be sitting against a tree. There'd be a squirrel like right here on my shoulder, like as close to my shoulder. I never was touched, could touch them. I never got that, but they would just come into me. And I, I just wanted as a kid and that sounds weird or well it's not weird but I just love to do I just I love doing that and I think that's where I understood Mm. you know that presence and just being still yes you know well it's it takes you out of the mind doesn't it and and you were actually developing the ability to function from the body of wisdom from effortless being uh, because yeah the there has to just be this total neutrality uh, and um because they're the, the animals are completely telepathic so they know what we're running through the mind and um so if they just sense that you're in this still space then the, yeah they th- there's no sense of threat or anything and there's just this it, this ease but mm-hmm. in terms of your own consciousness it's yeah that's a great practice really that's quite an interesting one because lots of people develop that ability in terms like of creativity because all forms of creativity come from effortless being or from the body of wisdom and so you know people who are musicians or even you know sports people um artists you know any kind of creativity even creative business it's all coming from the body of wisdom but um that's an interesting one in terms of relationship of animals yeah that's that's great though yeah and when you talk about animals being telepathic I experience this with horses all the time I think something that I want them to do when Mm. we're in a connection and they just do it Mm. yes um I need you know let's you go over here and I'm going to put you behind that gate to feed and they just go over, you know, I mean, um, you know, uh, when I was, yeah, you want to come over and talk to me, you're free to come over and talk to me and then they come right over. You know, it's, Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. And I've also, I have a lot of interactions with birds, but with birds, um, it usually comes when I'm thinking of somebody who is on the other side or who has transitioned oh, out of the body. Yeah. And so birds come and talk to me all the time when I'm thinking about them. I, um, they just present in my experience, you know, I'm mm-hmm. sitting on a step thinking about my grandfather who passed away and all of a sudden there's a hummingbird right next to me mm. and I've never seen a hummingbird <laughs> that close in my life before yeah. yes. um same I just I get experiences with birds constantly um just even walking my dog having a robin hop mm. beside us and my dog not wanting to go after the robin and the robin not even minding that 
Yeah, they're that they that's close and just hopping along beside us mm-hmm. on the sidewalk. And that is when um, I was thinking, I was thinking that happened. That happens all the time when I think about my grandma, Robbins, who is, <laughs> they come and wow. say hi to me um, or just like sitting, you know, in the chair and then smacking into my window, you know, and wow. it's always in connection to when I'm thinking about you know, um, somebody yes. who has transitioned yes. and that's when birds send all kinds of messages to me. <laughs> you, um, communicate directly with, um, either etheric or, um, astral or causal beings. Um, so I don't really know because, um, I, I, like I said, when I experienced kind of the shouting in my ear, um, I've, yeah, (laughs) so that's happened a couple other times in my life, you know, where I get, I've heard, I hear a shouting in my ear Mm. and it's, it's not in my voice. It's Mm. a shouting. Um, and then also with again, loved ones too, I hear when I'm, thinking about them. Um, so my great uncle who he's the one that he, he was a horse trainer. And so he's the one that I, um, grew, I went out and like learned how, or rode horses with him all the time when I was a little kid up until, um, my, you know, late twenties. And he's the one, that's how I discovered that I was loved horses and, Um, So communicating with him, I've heard him a couple of times in my ear as well. It doesn't sound like his voice, but it usually is something, it always is with horses. Yes. And I ask for assistance and things always just work out, you know? Mm. And yeah. And I saw one time I saw, again, this happens too. When I see pictures, I saw a picture of him. Um, One day my aunt had posted on Facebook and I was like, you look so serious, Jerry. And I literally heard him reply. The reply. And he laughed and he was like, I'm a lot more funnier now. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. I mean, I so I do, yeah. And um, even with patients transitioning, I have heard some um voices from them. Yes. who have passed away that I've experienced as well. I just, they just kind of pop in as a voice from, you know, so I don't, yeah, I don't know exactly I what that is or how, how to explain it or, um, yeah. and then the other thing, it just comes across to me when, um, so when my grandfather passed away, I was, um, I was meditating. It was like, cause I get up in the morning early and always do a meditation and I was, um, meditating trying to meditate in my son's truck um he has one of the toy trucks it kept going off honk honk beep beep (laughs) and then I would get up and I would look for it and I couldn't find it anywhere I was like digging through his toy box trying to find it and then I would like okay it was a fluke and I sat back down tried to meditate and then get trying to get in and then getting into the space and then honk honk beep and so it happened like three or four times and I said okay what's going on grandpa (laughs) my grandpa was a truck driver um (laughs) and I turned my phone on and there's a message from my dad and I was like oh something's happening well he died that night that early morning he transitioned mm. and I was like that's why he was honking at me yeah wow amazing <laughs> um yeah I mean I can go on and on I have lots of stories of the of things like this but I don't know how many you need me to but no I, think um, that's really I nice. just yeah I'd like to talk um, about realization though with you because yes um what yeah I, I mentioned before we started recording just how in the conversation we had um there was realization during the conversation but it was almost well it was very clear that there was already realization and there was knowing of realization it was almost just like a confirmation but it was it was it was it was a confirmation you didn't need in one way so it's quite amusing really but it's great to see all the different ways that realization 
occurs. But I, I think what, um, you know, what's really clear for you is how you're able to integrate the, um, well, really the ability to step in and out of the human character. And because people see realization in many ways, some people feel as though there's this shift into realization and then the in, then individuality disappears. But actually it isn't like that. Um, there's the ability, you know, consciously to, to step in and out, you know, we can move from the impersonal to the personal and that can be, that can be something that we do consciously, but it enriches both. And, um, it's it's great that to me it's very clear that there's been realization for you for a very long time and um the b because the ability for you to shift from the impersonal from your infinite nature into the personal realm into the character of Kylie Ann is that you can do that seamlessly and, and so that's but that uh, that's an ability um which rarely is available instantaneously it's something which tends to develop over a period of time but um you know that's that's certainly there for you um yeah i like you said it's yeah it's just something that i mean i just needed to hear it you know from somebody else like the truth. I mean, when you know what the truth is and you can resonate, like, you know, and I just needed, because I am constant or, well, the invitation for Kylie Ann is always, um, and I think it's presented in like, you need to grow up, you know, because I feel always that I've been an eternal child. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, and I've remained as that, yeah and have fully resisted you know this taking on er, seriousness yeah. of life maybe i think yes. um you know and yeah, um, the world however fun. yeah however the invitation of like you need to you know be responsible grow up and you know take things seriously and you know do things as a, a certain sort of way it's just always, you know, felt so not mm. the truth in any mm. sort of sense. Yeah. 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 And you just letting me know and then having the a real, like, <laughs> even thinking about it now, it just like makes me want to laugh, you know, mm. Yeah. because I've always, this is my nature that I've always known. And I think everybody always knows, you know, I mean, you know, you yes. know. Yeah, absolutely. And but you just sometimes you just need to hear like, you know, because the invitation for me is that this is like I need to be like everybody else, you know, and you and is when I hear it do... from somebody like, yeah. you know, somebody like you, it's like, okay, no, you're you're this is your true nature. This is who you are. I'm like, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, this is what I've always known. Mm -hmm. And um now for some reason I just needed like a permission almost to, or I don't know how to explain mm -hmm. that, but well, your intuition guided you away from, you know, taking on the burdens of responsibility and adulthood and all those things which the world loves us to take on. Yeah. Um, because that takes into the, the realm of limitation and suffering. So it's um, it's quite good to be belligerent in a very childlike way. <laughs> where you, do, you just don't consent to that at all. No, no. Um, and like I said, it's, um, it's just so, it's, it's just undescribable freedom to just, you know, um, be and bouncing in and out of the character is just fun you know so yeah. I think of like my you know like I'm effortless awareness and I I want to experience things through Kylie Ann's body hmm. 
And that's how I think to have bouncing in and out. Like I want to have this experience through this physical body in this physical world Mm -hmm. for fun and enjoyment Mm -hmm. and to become, because I'm just effortless awareness, but I'm just having fun And like, what else does do is effortless awareness through Kylie Ann's body want to experience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, but it's it's funny how it's overlooked, isn't it? Because we're encouraged to be focusing on, you know, pain and suffering when actually when we see our infinite nature, that's all it really would ever wish for, which is just to have a really fantastic time, you know, which is just full in every sense. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's just to have the experience, but to have the fully experience and feel it, but there's not an attachment almost, you know? Yeah. Because there's not an identification with that you're just this mind and body. Mm. Yes. There's so much more and you don't have to, you're just, wa- it's just, yeah, it's, you're just watching this movie and choosing what you want to, it's almost like when you're dreaming and you're half asleep and you're half awake and then you realize you're dreaming and you realize you can control the dream you know Hmm. yeah lucid dreaming yeah 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 lucid dreaming yeah Hmm. i guess that's that's, yeah that's that's great well for you though it just seems that the uh the ability to be in alignment with your infinite nature and function intuitively you know is something which has predominated really for you you know the the world's tried very hard to get you to comply with the worldly experience and the weight of identification with you know time and space and everything but um it was never really going to win through with you Kylie Ann was it (laughs) you know yeah and I had a period of time I know we talked um of before on our the our previous conversation about um t- traumas and like different life experiences and i've mm-hmm. had diff- tons of different life experiences that you could consider traumatic and i had a period of time where i thought i would where i was trying to be in the world and be that and i felt and it was the worst time of my experience here in this planet i was i, I felt like I was in a victim mode and the whole time I just, like I said, I think it's because I don't know why when I I was a kid, I just, I spent a lot of time by myself and a lot of time observing and, you know, just being in that presence that I, I very strongly can feel what's right and what's not right. You know, the outside of my mind, what outside of what my mind is telling me and when I had kind of those years where I was that, I knew it, it just didn't feel right. I was just like, cause I had a sense that I almost created these experiences, you know, because of the fact that I'm thinking that I have to be this or do that, or, you know, mm-hmm. that I was I, underlining all of it. I was like, I've been, I'm creating these experiences. I know I'm, you know, unconsciously kind of creating, I could just, mm-hmm you know, step away from it. And, and I did. And I like, I I put it that time period when I decided, like, I'm just got to go with, I got to stop going with my mind and go with what is I'm feeling is where I always say is that I felt like I was locked in a cage and then realized that I had the key. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and I just unlocked it. And I stepped out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, my life completely changed in a very short period of time when I did that. And, um, I am then from then there's no looking back. I'm going, yeah, with, you could you never know? go back there. Could you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, now then I've been on it even more of this quest to. It becomes really... more wild in a way, which is great because it becomes more outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I yeah you know you have to ex- be more uh you have to I guess when you're playing the life and times of Kylie and it's got to have a little bit more the movie's got to have some plots you know some like drama yes 
<laughs> in there just to make it interesting, I guess. Mm. <laughs> it's yeah. weird. It's inter it's weird how we do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so. it's amazing though the way you've you've had this knowing just right through your life, really. You just you you tried that little period of being, you know, a worldly character and yeah, it didn't work at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. no, it didn't. It was no, it didn't work at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's lovely. <laughs> that's been really nice just to have a catch up because it's um yeah, it's it's great. But there are only three um, conversations posted so far where the people have consented to, um, you know, the initial conversation being posted on my channel. And and um, it's it, but it's nice to have a follow up um, with the the one of Rika Rika Markle and, and yours. It's been sort of two or three weeks afterwards, so that's quite good. So it's early days. It's early days in one sense, but for you it isn't because it's been like this forever, really. Yeah, yeah. It's the sort, you know, you, yeah, you just know this. And I just think that because I don't know why I've always so I was given, I've always had, you know, again, like I said, I had the as a child with the animals. And then I also had a sense when I was experiencing as a child people passing away. I knew they weren't in their body, but I knew they weren't gone, you know, cause I, I could feel them. Mm. Um, and that never left. And then as I got older, I was given, I was in therapy and that was during my time period where I was trying to like play this human. And, mm. and the therapist that I got was this kind of, um, he was a very enlightened being. And, um, he gave me the Course in Miracles book, and I've just had these series of like people popping in that have been mm. really enlightened, like you. And I just and they just give me stuff, you know. <laughs> and like, yeah. Um, so yeah. then that cor Course in Miracles, I never I read it and I didn't understand a thing, but I knew um, intuitively it was a very powerful book, and so I literally just carried it around with me mm. um, everywhere I went for several years. Um, and then I heard Wayne Dyer talk about just without the power of having books in your presence and, um, and even without reading them. And I was like, Oh, that's why I carried that book with me for so long, you know? Um, but yeah, I think when you just have the, um, you keep having experiences that reinforce that your intuition and that body of wisdom is leading you, it just helps reinforce. But there is this period where you have to just really break out of the human character and trust, yeah. you know. Yeah, and that's when. That well, it's giving you the right information because your mind is going to fight you every step of the way, especially in the beginning. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah so brilliant yeah. well thanks so much Kalyan, and i'm sure thank we'll be you again, so. i would love to i love talking to you and there's gonna yeah i mean i just there's a more that i'm ready to realize that i already knew but maybe i don't realize i know yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks so much thank you, thank you.